Good morning. Hi, welcome to your practice. Mm, we're going to be stepping forward and back on the mat today. So you might like to have a chair handy. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to begin kneeling. And just to jog your memory and around, try to have your toes, your feet parallel to each other when you kneel down. And if it hurts your knee, make a high enough piece of equipment to put underneath your sick bone so that you can sit comfortably. So don't do it if it really hurts your knee. And you can sit with your feet out in front if that's the case. So it's possible to kneel onto your heels, of course, but then your toes will tend to turn in. So see if you can get that nice parallel. So my heels are under there. I'm feeling the length of your spine. Closing your eyes and Finding your breathing. The rhythm of your breath. And what it feels like to connect to your breath. attention to how your feet and your ankles feel, the knee, and maybe one side feels tighter than the other side. Maybe there's more sensation. And what would you need to let go of or relax in your body to even up a little bit? Good. And then we're going to try and press the tops of the feet down to the floor. So you'll feel the quadriceps engage above the knee, quadricep muscles on top of the thigh. We're pressing the feet down, so it's nice and relaxed in the upper body. Really pressing, 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 and then completely relax. And check in again. What can you? let go of. Do you feel uh, an evenness both sides of your body? Good. And we'll repeat that by pressing down through the tops of the feet. Now if you're not sitting in kneeling and you've got your legs out in front of you, try pressing down the back of your legs to the feet. Really pressing. Feeling nice and warm in your thighs. Good. And then we're going to completely release. And again, look for some evenness side to side and letting go, letting go of that muscular tension. Good. And we're going to be in an all forward position now. Great, wide, even spaces between your fingers, press your fingerprint. And to warm up the wrist, let's go forward and back a little. Good, and then little circles around your wrist. And then the other direction. Good. And then tucking your toes under and knees away from the floor. And we're going to lift the hips high. Let your head just hang down, chest towards the front of your legs. 
Good, and let's go forward and back a little bit on the wrists again. So just moving the shoulders forward and back. Keep some space at the back of the neck. Good, see if you can ease the hips back further now. We're going to hold in downward facing dog. Shoulders wide. Press your heels down now towards the floor. Lift the sit bone, open the chest and the armpit. Hmm. Good. And then knees to the floor and rest your arms into child's pose. I prefer arms resting beside me, but for some people it feels better to stack the hands softly under the forehead. And either way, we want to let the shoulders relax. Good, and then arms forward now, forward virasana. Connecting to the breath, noticing the feeling of doing that. Press the fronts of the uh, legs down to the floor again, the fronts of the feet, but don't lift the uh, pelvis away from the floor, but just active legs again. And see if you can lengthen the spine a little more. Good. And then completely relax. Relax your spine and neck. Good. We're going to bring the elbows to the floor and come up into a modified uh, plank position where the elbows are on the floor. And we're going to drop the hips forward not quite to the floor. So we're lifting the tummy, feeling the core of the body engage. Stretch your fingers out wide. Press your hands down into the floor and lift your breastbone on the floor. Tummy's lifting away from the floor. Good. And then we're going to press back into the child pose and completely. Hmm. Shoulders and mm, good and repeating. So arms forward in forward virasana. Mm, press the fronts of your feet, your legs down into the floor. Try to keep the hips down. Good. As you press the legs down, feel the belly lifting away from the floor. Lengthen the spine. Good. And then we're going to bring the elbows down onto the floor, looking forward and bringing the hips forward. So you might need to adjust so that your hips are nearly on the floor, not quite. Your elbows are under your shoulder. Stretch your fingers out wide. And we're lifting the front floor. Press the tops of the feet down. Press the hands down. Look forward. <laughs> Good. And then coming back into child's pose. <laughs> I love how the casual observer might think that we're taking that in a relaxed way. There's so much going on. So in child's pose, really letting go of that tension. Mm, breathing deep. Now you're going to roll onto your side so that you can see your device. So we're going to lay out along the mat, floor side down ceiling side up <laughs> and you're going to bend your ceiling leg and place it up on your thigh like you were in a tree pose. Good. Now you can have your hand down on the floor for balance and the other thing you can do is bend the floor leg so you don't have to have it out straight. Good. 
we're going to uh, keep the hand, sorry, keep the hand on the floor. I'm going to try and lift the ribs up away from the floor. Lifting the ribs away from the floor, but don't press your head down and tense your neck to do that. So just use the core of your body to lift your ribs. Good. And release. Nice and relaxed. Good. Take your uh, roof leg, your ceiling leg out straight and make some circles. Now, as you make this circle, you can reach into the range of movement. So behind you, up to the ceiling. You can make all of this trickier <laughs> if you don't have that lower hand on the floor, sorry, the upper hand on the floor. So you can rest it on your thigh or you can take it up. Oh, there'll be more core ingenuity happening. Go in the other direction with your circle. Try not to be pressing uncomfortably your head into your hand. Good. And then bring that leg back as if it was in tree pose. Press your ribs down into the floor. And then try to lift your ribs away from the floor. But don't use your neck muscles to do that. So lifting the ribs using your core. Good. And then you're going to roll over. So you're doing your other side. I'll swing around on my mat. So I'm still facing. Okay, so we'll still have floor legs. Rest your head into your hands. We want to stay nice and relaxed in the neck. Doing this. Put your uh, ceiling leg like it's in tree pose. Good, and try lifting your ribs away from the floor, but don't press your head down into your hand. Keep that lifting the ribs using the core awareness. Hmm. Good. That's nice and now relax. Nice and relaxed. Great. Take your feeling leg out and let's make some nice big circles with that feeling leg. Now, notice maybe you're a bit wobbly and you've got your hand on the floor to help you keep your balance. You want to make it trickier. It will be more work for the core. You can try taking your right arm. You can rest it on your thigh or you can take it up. Oh, might keep it on the floor. <laughs> right, try your whole range of motion there. And then the other direction. Mm. <laughs> I'm really having trouble balancing. All right, good. And then bring it back into tree pose. Let's try pressing the ribs into the floor. Keep your neck nice and relaxed. Press the ribs, press the ribs, press the ribs. Ooh, and then release. And now lift the ribs away from the floor. But don't press your head into your head. Good. Nice work. You're going to roll onto your tummy. Looking forward. Elbows in, elbows back. Oh, sorry, hands under the shoulders. Good. Lift your breastbone where it's comfortable. Press the tops of the feet down. Good. Feeling very active in the muscles either side of the spine. Good. And then we're going to lower down and completely relax. So take the arms down beside you. Ah. Oh. Mm. Good. And then again, we're going to lift. You can put your hands back under your shoulders or lift them up by your side, palms facing up. So lifting the breastbone, the ribs off the floor, even the feet off the floor, if that feels okay. Good. And really lengthen top of the head away from the feet, feet from the top of the head, palms are lifting. Good. And then when you relax, lay down nice and long and really broad. 
Ah, and let the back of the body relax. Mm, good. And then you're going to come back into your all fours position. Again, rocking forward and back a little on the wrist. Fingers out wide. Press your fingerprint, base of the index fingers. Mm, good. Downward facing dog pose again. A little bit of rocking forward and back still with the shoulders over the wrist. Just testing your range of movement here. So we don't quite come into a plank pose. We're still a bit bent in the middle. Downward facing dog pose. And then hold downward facing dog pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Let your head just hang down. Press your heels down. Lift the kneecaps, the quadriceps, the sit bone. But let the spine lengthen. Mm. Good. And then walking forward and see if you can take your nice little steps where you get to press the back of your heel towards the floor. And we're going to roll up. Nice work. Now, you might like to have a seat of a chair for our moving back and forward on the mat. Or maybe you've done enough yoga classes this term to feel like you don't need one. Tadasana. Inhale, arms up, look up. And as you exhale, Tadasana. Now we're going to take a few breaths and warm up the hamstrings. So first of all, bend both legs, look forward. And get that nice easeful feeling in your spine. Good. And then try straightening your legs and maybe doing one more than the other works better. So you can pedal a little bit from side to side. You want to encourage that nice big stretch, but without feeling like the skin over the back is taut. Good. And then. Bend your knees and inhale and roll up. <laughs> Looking up. So far, so good. Great. Back into Uttanasana. So, Urdhvahasana. Uttanasana. Easeful spine. Stretching. Great. Let's take the left foot back so that the heel's on the floor. And we'll test again that movement of stretching the back of the legs by just easing the front leg bent and straight, bent and straight. And what's happening with the spine? Can we be a little easier there? Can we keep looking forward, lifting the breastbone? Hands might be up on the seat of your chair instead of the floor. Pressing the back heel. Good, and then let's hold as stretchy as the legs will go without compromising the ease of the spine. Good. We're going to be nice and um, aware of the feet. Feel grounded. Feel the strength of your leg. We're going to lift the breastbone and look forward. And if you have your balance, take your arms up beside you. Come up, look forward. Mm -hmm. nice work. Legs as straight as you can. Reach the torso as far forward as you can. Good. We're going to lift up in one smooth movement, step forward and balance on the left. And however you're going to hold that front leg, you might be holding your knee, your foot or your tiptoes might be on the floor. Feel the core of your body lifting. Good, and then releasing that side. Inhale, arms up, look up. 
Urvahastasana. Exhaling into Uttanasana. Feeling the ease of your spine. Good. We're going to step the right foot back so that the heel stays connected to the floor. And we're going to try and find some movement in this pose by bending and straightening the front leg. When you bend, try and reach the spine further forward, the chest further forward. Try and get that feeling of ease over the spine without the skin feeling too tight. Ooh. Good. Hold as stretchy as you can in your leg, as straight as you can. Nice, easy spine. Look forward. Make a little back bend. And then really press your feet. Feel the feet connected. Feel how strong your legs are. Good. Lengthening belly and chest. And if you have your balance, take your arms up by your side. We're looking forward. Keep lifting the palms, reaching the fingertips back. Keep pressing the feet. Lift the belly and reach it out a little further over your front leg. Lift the arms. Mm. Good. And then we're going to step forward, lift up, balance on the left leg, and bring the right foot in front. In as smooth a movement as you can. Mm. Then decide where you're going to put your front foot. Toes on the floor, lifting up high, even taking a hold. But whichever balance, find the core of your body. Feel the core of the body lift and support. Nice work. And then release. Tada, tada. Mountain pose. Feeling an evenness. Both feet. Leg, either side of the spine. Inhale, arms up, look up. And as you exhale, Uttanasana, easy spine, stretchy leg. Leg, biggest step back this time. So the back here won't be quite on the floor. And we've got the front leg bent. And we're going to drop the back knee towards the floor. So both legs are bent. But again, lift the belly, lift the breastbone, look forward, bring the arms up beside you if you have your balance. Palms up, fingers back. Make the tops of the shoulders longer. And again, trust in your legs, even in this odd kind of position. Good. Now we're not going to step forward from here. We're going to put the hands back down onto the floor. But keep that nice feeling in your spine when you have your hands up. Good. Straighten your back leg. Press the back heel. Good. Put your left hand down onto the floor, just inside your right foot. Great. And put your right hand on your sacrum. And we're going to start to try and straighten the front leg a little bit. Just a little and turn your ribs so that you're facing the front of your torso to the right side of your mat. Maybe your right shoulder blade, uh, sorry, right shoulder stacks up over your left shoulder. So you're looking to the right. Keep trying to straighten your front leg. Pressing both. Feet down to the floor. Good. And then we're going to release that side. And now we're going to step forward and lift up and balance. Boom. Taking whatever balance hold seems appropriate this morning. So if toe tips near the floor or you can lift your leg. You can hold your leg, but find the core of the body. Feel that good balance that comes from core awareness. Mm. Good, and then release that side. Mm. Ta -da, ta -da. 
in the half alpha. Urdhva Hastasana. Easy spine, stretch your legs. Uttanasana. Big step back. So your back heel won't quite be on the floor. You want a nice big stretch. Bend your front leg. Bend your back leg. So you're in a crescent lunge leg position and the legs are parallel to each other. And if you have your balance, we're going to try and lift the arms up off the floor. Arms up, look forward. Good work. Now, we're going to put the right hand or the hands back down on the floor. Put the right hand on the mat, just on the inside of your left leg, and straighten your right leg. So we're going to go for getting the legs as straight as we can. But keep an ease to your spine. Good. So if you have your balance, put your left hand on your sacrum and start to lift your left ribs and turn your torso so you can look to your left. We even try and bring the left shoulder back so that it's lining up over the right foot. You're looking to your left and you're trying to press down through your legs nice and straight. Good, and then release and turn back to the front. We're going to step forward and lift up. <laughs> and lift it in one smooth movement. Now decide where the right leg goes, either the tiptoes at the floor, lifting or holding. And whichever position, we have the strength of the one leg we're standing on, but feel the strength of the core. Connect to your breath. And then releasing that side. Tadasana. Now this time we're going to step back for Trikonasana, triangle pose with the left leg. Inhale, Anta. As you exhale, Uttanasana. And step back with your left foot and place it for Trikonasana, for triangle pose. So that means you've got your right heel lining up with the centre of the left foot in Anta. Now, it can be trickier to lift up into the posture from the floor here than we do when we do it from standing. So let's just soften both legs to do that first. Roll the left hip back, roll your left shoulder back. So you're looking left and you've got that nice feeling of the chest lifting. So not hanging down towards the floor. Lifting up, looking. All right, and then you're going to slide your right hand as far up your right leg as you need to to feel an evenness both sides of the spine. Good, and then we'll straighten both legs. Okay. And then easing back into your trikonasana, so reaching your spine as far as it'll go. Good, and we'll take the left arm up as well. Good, and then we're going to lift up. <laughs> All right. Take a little bit of a wider stance. So wiggle the feet a little bit further apart. Just ease the hips left and right. Good. Take the hips left as far as you can. So you've got a nice deep right hip crease. And we're going to reach the ribs out over that thigh and come back into your trick and nothing. So notice two ways of getting into the posture from the ground up <laughs> and from standing. And what are we looking for? Nice and long in the right ribs, the right way. Opening the heart towards the ceiling. Good balance, of course, good awareness in the feet and the legs. And the core of the body.
Good. We're going to swing the left arm back to the front of the mat and you're going to turn to look at the front of the mat. Great. We're going to step forward, balance on the right foot as you lift up. <laughs> Not quite. And either tiptoes on the floor or take our balance hold. Finding the core of the body, really supporting. Good. And then whatever hold you have, we're going to take the knee out to the left side. So you might want to take your right arm out to the right for a counterbalance. Good. And then release. Mm -hmm. Ooh, feet in Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. And as you exhale, Uttanasana. And we're going to step the right foot back for Trikonasana. Good. Now we've got the left heel lined up with the right foot in arch. The right toes turn towards the middle of the mat ish rather than away from you. Legs a little bit soft as you start to lift up. Good. So you need to find your balance, find your legs. And sliding your left hand up your leg, keep going until you feel really comfortable in your spine. And bring your right arm up into Trikonasana. Good, straighten your legs. And now you're going to lift up, really feeling the core of the body. Good. And start to relax the core and just swing the hips left and right. So loosen up. Good. Swing the hips right so that the left hip crease deepens. And then reach your left ribs over your left leg. Oh, I forgot to get the feet a little bit wider. You can come back up and do that if you need to. Or just squiggle them out. All right, trikonasana. But reaching further with the left ribs now. Finding a good balance. Rolling the right hip back, the right ribs back. Opening the heart towards the ceiling. Reaching through the arm and feeling the good foundation, your feet and legs, and the core support. Nice work. Come up. Ah, oh, that's right. We're going to go back to the floor. Ah, let's go down again. Left to hand down onto the left leg. Swing the right arm forward to the front of the mat. It's a little bit trickier. Moving from here, turn your torso back to the front of the mat so that when you step forward and lift up, there's more work to be had. <laughs> and taking your balance hold. Good. Whatever hold that might be, find the core of your body, feeling that lovely support. Okay, and whichever hold you have, let's take the right knee out to the right side. You might have your left arm out to the left as a counter weight. And then release. Ah, Tadasana. Mm. Inhale, arms up. Keep your arms up, draw the shoulder blades down. Utkatasana, lower your sit bones towards the floor behind, just as far as your knees are comfortable with, and keep your legs parallel. Find ease for the spine. So front and back of the core, nice and even in length. And the front core of the body really supporting. Press evenly the soles of the feet. Good. 
And bring the palms of the hands together in front of the heart. Draw the shoulder blades down. Good. And then straighten your legs. Nice work. Now we're going to part the feet a little bit more, turn the heels out, and we're going to practice our squatting. Put your arms out in front as far as you can as a counter measure, counter weight, and see if you can keep your heels on the floor. So only bend your knees as far as you can keep your heels on the floor. And really importantly, lift the pelvic floor. When you're practicing squats, really lift the pelvic floor. Very good for continence to lift the pelvic floor. And it's the opposite if you don't. <laughs> so we don't want that. All right, so you go as far as you can, keeping your heels connected to the floor. And then you're going to stand up. Nice. And we'll go again. So your heels are a little bit wider than your hip. Toes turned out. Put your arms out in front for counterweight. You only need to drop as far as your knees let you and so that your heels don't lift up. So don't let them lift up. Doesn't matter if you don't go all the way down. Keep lifting the pelvic floor and really press into your heels to lift back up. <laughs> nice work. We're going to do one more. And if you can sit on the floor at the end of this third one, then do that. Otherwise, come back up and arrange yourself in a sitting position. So really concentrate on keeping the heels down, on lifting the pelvic floor, feeling that internal muscular support. So when you're ready, taking a seat. Think about the notch between the collarbone. And we're going to take the body in a circle around the hips following that. And what happens? The neck will follow. You let the neck be very relaxed. In other direction. Right. And then finding your breath. So there's been a lot of switching on and then relaxing in the practice today. Switch on the lift of your spine. And then without losing any length, relax. Switch on the lift of the spine. Again, without losing any length. Right. We're going to turn gently to the left side. And keep using the breath in that way to lift and turn. Inhaling and lifting. Then as you exhale, without losing length, mobility turn use your inhalation lift and lengthen as you exhale relax Good. and then back to center and you can change the cross of your legs and turning to the second side. With every inhalation, lift a little more. With every exhalation, turn a little more. 
without losing lift. With every exhalation, feel a little more relaxed in what you're doing. Good, and then release and then come back to center. In your moment and finding that length at the same time. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Take the feeling of the pocket with you. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Thank you.